Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to talk about semiconductor and artificial intelligence. Those are the two subjects I have devoted my whole life to. It. My career in the past 47 years, those are the two things that I really have passion in. So today, I have 20 minutes given to share with you my 40-some years experience. So I roughly calculated, that means less than half a minute per year of my experience. <laughs> Hopefully I selected the right one, make you feel interesting. What really amazes me in this semiconductor and AI is this advanced doesn't work. <laughs> this doesn't work. <laughs> That's okay. We can do it. This is my outline. Uh, I have uh, observed the commonality between the two. Very interesting to me. I would like to share some of the examples with you, hopefully, you found also interesting. Then I'll talk about the past, talk about, I'll talk about semiconductor in the past, today, and future. Started with the six sexy curves with their inflection points. Then talk about now, we're mature, but we're not deteriorating and the future, based on technology push and market pull. With the push and pull, we'll have wonderful semiconductor industry. This is the first time I noticed the, the commonality between the two. That's about 15 years ago. The interesting thing is, they have so many commonalities uh, makes the two fields interact very interesting. The most important one is they both are massive power processing. With big data in AI, this is absolutely necessary. And as many people know, GPU is the basic of AI computation. Just like lithography is the essence of semiconductor manufacturing. Both are extremely important. Not only they have the commonality, they also migrate to synthesis. Lithography makes transistors. GPU uses transistors. And no other application uses more transistors than a GPU chip. And lithography needs computation. That's why we call computational lithography and CPU computes. This is 15 years ago. Since then, I have discussed there are even more commonality from image rendering based upon parallel processing to image recognition to image creation. Image rendering, besides lithography, semiconductor process, including etching, deposition, CMP, they all done in parallel. You open the shutter, the light comes in, billions of transistors are replicated on the wafer. Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine if you do one at a time? I would have never made one chip yet in my life. <laughs> GPU processing thousands of cores, distribute the on-chip memory. We do massive parallel processing more than anything else. That's what's needed in AI, in image rendering and in image recognition, which is now the hard item. We are working with TSMC and other manufacturing companies about OPC, optical proximity correction. The reason we need that is because the features on IC chips are smaller than the wavelength of the light we use to expose. 
Therefore, you have neighboring element interaction causes optical proximity effect. We need to compensate that. Compensate the distorted images on the mask. Therefore, after you correct, you reproduce exactly what the designers have drawn. That's the idea. And we're doing that now. Another very well-known example is the inspection. We use tools from KOA, from applied material, to do the wafer inspection to find the defects. Those defects may or may not kill your electrical circuit. The tool has to be smart enough to distinguish that. Just like I have those so-called defects on my face too. <laughs> right? The lumps and the edge, the spark. But they are benign, they're fine. Those are nuisance. We don't need to worry about that. Right? So the tool needs to distinguish that. And they're doing that now together with NVIDIA. And the next step is we're not going to just find the defect. We're going to find the source of the defect. Therefore, we eliminate the source. Because defects are the enemies of semiconductor manufacturing. Once we eliminate the source, they will never appear again on our wafer. Lastly is image creation. This is my personal view. I think there are many smart people already probably thinking, if not working on this already. Why do we need engineers, my designers, to sit there hours and days to draw the interconnect, to do the layout, to do the placement and route? We call that PNL. Why? AI can do it. As long as we tell them the connectivity among the nodes, among the transistor, they can do it. They can do it beautifully for best performance, power, and area. And by definition, they will be manufacturer friendly. Because manufacturers like TSMC, they will do this based upon our connectivity. Therefore, by definition, it will be DFM designed for manufacturer. It will be manufacturer friendly. Okay. Let's move on. I see market. This is my six sexy curves. I better be careful about my pronunciation. Six sexy curves. Each, everyone has its inflection point. All started with technology push. Without the invention of transistor, we will not have any of those curves. Without have the invention of the IC. Jack curve, we will not have any of those curves. But they all started grow, not only grow, grow very strongly. The growth rate accelerates, the growth rate increases until you reach to the inflection point, then it slows down. The precise definition of inflection point is mathematically defined as the second derivative change its sign. In this case, changes from positive to negative. That means we're still growing, but the growth rate slows down. That makes sense? Now we're on the sixth curve, the number six curve. Now, people say semiconductor has matured. John, why are you still passionate about semiconductor? Yes, it has have matured. I am mature. Probably more than mature. <laughs> Only to this day, I want you to become our mentor. I said that makes me feel old. I'm not that old. <laughs> anyway, mature is not bad. Deterioration is bad. We're still energetic, right? You're going to see my CEO tonight. They're an energetic person. We're still passionate about what we're doing. That's the importance. Substitution is even worse. The railroad industry, they are substituted by automotive invention, by airplane. For those of them who did not see that, they were out of business. But I don't see anything 
replace semiconductor. Do you? Not in the near future. I think not only semiconductor is still vividly existing, it's still growing. And it's going to grow faster and stronger than ever because artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence needs semiconductor. And this is my favorite, one of my favorite pictures from Dr. Andrew Yee. Many decades ago, people in Bell Lab have already done research in neural net. Right? But why is it taking off today? Why didn't it take off before? This is the reason. It's because semiconductor has advanced to the degree to give us the hardware to be able to take off. To have an AI, 10 minutes left, my goodness, I'm hardly starting. <laughs> I think I just warmed up their appetite. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll speed up, I'll speed up. The, to launch an AI rocket, you need two things. One is high performance engine. That's the high performance computing today. You need to be a carry off per second. The other one is fuel. You need a huge amount of fuel. And we have that. For AI, we need Big data. We need large, huge amount of memory to store those big data, right? A few years ago, we already have memories that cost us less than three cents per thousand memory bit. You cannot find anything cheaper than that in the supermarket. <laughs> it's almost free with the memory as the fuel and the high performance computing, we launch AI rocket. Now, this is what I presented 2011. I was just showing a fact. I was just showing the data. It's not even much of an opinion. It shows more slow was slowing down. At the time, I would modestly say slowing down. You can see it from the curve. Not only does it double the transistor every two years, the cost of the transistor doesn't become half. It hardly goes down compared to the previous load. But my preaching was really for collaboration. We need to face the challenge. We need to accept the challenge and figure out a way together to continue to grow this industry. But I was misquoted and trusted by the media and I went to the public and my CEO, Jensen, got a bunch of calls to his office, including the one from the president of TSMC, North America, and also from the Wall Street, saying I'm complaining, uh, the cost is too high, and so on and so forth. Fortunately, I worked for a great CEO. He was, he is, wise enough to know that's not my purpose. Okay, we're going to skip this. This is Joe's, the CPU curve versus the GPU. You can see which one uses more transistors. It's a very obvious curve. We use more transistors than anybody else because we use parallel processing. We have thousands of cores. And we need more. Even though today, Moore's Law has ended, we don't have the luxury of double the transistor for the same area every other year. But we can still double the transistor by slightly growing the chip size. Now, even that is tough. However, we need more transistors. That gives us Better chips. And this is our latest the hopper chip, the latest the GPU from NVIDIA. It has 80 billion transistors. 
I still remember just several years ago, I talked about we have a product of 8 billion transistors exceeding the world population. I said that in a very exciting way. But just a few years, we're now 10x of world population. Now, we are at four pentaflops. I don't know what is pentaflops. You guys know what's pentaflops? Pental yes, sir. Very, very big. You absolutely right. He is 100% right. Very, very big. Don't worry about how big. <laughs> this very, 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 very big. 1,000 times terra. Terra is trillion, right? So, very, very big. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, we're not going to stop because Moore's law has ended. We're going to continue. For all the aspects, we're going to innovate. We're going to have new architecture, new connect, new network. This is the curve I added for ZP. Where is ZP? He asked me this question when I was preparing the slide. He said, you have this quantum network. Yes, that's why we merged Mellanox. We start fabric. We not only we can do 1 million X improvement in 10 years, we can do more than 1 million. But still more challenging. Now, not only Moore's law has ended, the traditional downscaling is near the end. Chang Wu Zi Mo, near the end. You can hardly squeeze out 5% or 10%. He shows five minutes. I say 5%, he shows in five minutes. <laughs> but we can still make transitions with all the innovations. And this is the latest Grace Harper. I love this name, Grace Harper. For those of you who don't know, she is a famous female scientist. Our CPU is Grace, our GPU is Grace Harper. But we had to make that into two different chips. We cannot integrate that into one chip because we're already at the maximum size of the chip. We already exceeded the radical size. And we made it two chips and used the multi-chip module to connect them together. Integrated circuit. What is the power of integrated circuit? The key word is integrate. You want to integrate as much as possible. Before the invention of integrated circuit, we have to put one transistor, three resistor, one capacitor on PC board. There was no PC, sorry, at the time. We want to integrate. Not only integrate, I always propose, we want to integrate at the lowest level. If you can integrate that in one monolithic chip, that's all you want to do. Okay, I'm toward the end, don't worry. I'm getting there. This is what I preached at the ITPC conference in Hawaii a few years ago. At the time, I was excited in talking about make artificial intelligence and manufactured intelligence working together. I was talking about use AI chips to make better AI systems. That helps the fab to make smart tools, therefore intelligent manufacturing. Therefore, they can make better AI chips. And this mutual reinforcement and cycles of learning is the future of semiconductor, in my humble view. And today, that's not a wish list. This is already happening. We're working with Synapses, TSMC, together on this OPC, inverse lithography technology, to use machine learning to assist OPC correction. And I think soon we're going to use AI to generate interconnect targets. We're working with K2 
KIA, with applied materials, on smart inspection. Not only classify the defect, we also want to be able to identify the source, to eliminate it. And this is the slide I borrowed from my old colleague and my friend J.K. when he talked about this four years ago. He showed four different areas that the FAB can benefit from AI. This is my last slide. Empower AI. Is that the topic to, for this <laughs> conference? Is that the thing? Yes. Okay. So, we want to be in the cloud, right? We're already in the cloud. To give the market pool, we demand no AI chips than anybody else. So for guys like TSMC, we're the market. We're the market pool. Not only that, I want us to be the technology push. We want to make their tools smarter. We want to make their manufacturing process better, more perfect. Not only that, we want to make the EDA people. We want to enhance that to make smart design tools so that the designers can just re relax they can use their time to innovate more things. If not, they can go play golf or karaoke. <laughs> this is how I learned to use microphone. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me, do I want a microphone? Click on. I said, I'm good at microphone. Because years of karaoke learning. <laughs> Push and pull with AI. NVIDIA will be under and above semiconductor industry. Just like Tony, I will always be around Castle. Thank you. So, this is to show, even at mature in this English-speaking country, my Mandarin is not deteriorated. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for. Uh... What is your favorite building? Something that you designed or something you live in? Oh, I, you mean our product? No, no, no. Um, you can see that too. Yeah. Or our building. We reside. We eat lunch there. We <laughs> it can be either or. What's, either what's or something that? So you have two questions. Is he allowed? Uh, yeah, we, we can pick one. Okay. <laughs> I love Chris Hopper. I just said. That's a wonderful thing. Not only we have TPU like everybody knows, we have CPU now, right? And someday we're gonna make both of them on one single monolithic chip. Would you love it? Plus that scientist, that female scientist, she's so smart. And uh, for the beauty, we have this wonderful beauty. My daughter loves it, young people love it. And it's made like space shuttle or something. You know, it has the outside dining uh, for lunch and, uh, and just uh, energy efficient and just beautiful. That's our beauty. Sorry, you want to take a shot of me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions before I leave? Yeah, I see yes. there's a pit there's a for there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just asking you to clarify, what does Michael still have to do with karaoke? <laughs> oh, your mom never took you to karaoke? <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I was the honorable chairman of the karaoke club <laughs> in TSMC when I was there. <laughs> in karaoke, you need to have a microphone. There's no clip on. There's no clip, clip on like that. You have to use a microphone. So you learn to use it in an in a, in a, in a elegant way, if you can. I just want to say thank you for your talk. Here's me, right here, Vince. Can you see him? Well, let me stand up. OK, last question. <laughs> Actually, huh? OK. Oh, I just want to say thank you for your talk and bringing Ross, uh, Vince Hopper. Because she's also an inventor of the word called debug, which we all debug at this point. The question for you is, what do you understand by essential AI? What I understand what? 
like you have empower AI, there's something called essential AI. What is your understanding of essential AI? Oh, you have to ask the professor. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> well, for a trillion dollar company. <laughs> I'm not that good in the very we'll talk to technical. Oh, ask it, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a good question, I'm sure. I'll, I'll learn. I'll learn. Anyway, next time I'll answer it. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, thank you for your great talk. Uh, excellent. Just a quick question. Uh, the CPU you have, is that ARM based? <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you make me feel like this is a PhD quiz. <laughs> I think it's somehow... Good thing you're not a professor, my next speaker. Uh, you know, last time I was giving a speech at Stanford, there's a Nobel Prize winner, Professor Oscar Kosh. Good thing I didn't know you was the Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> so I answered. Uh, I think somehow... Yes, we are a good partner of ARM. We use their uh, IPs at various levels. You know, they have architecture level, they have uh, uh, design level, standard level. But I'm sure we have, based upon our specific need, we have modified and improved. But if you need something deeper, we have a profession here. We have ARM people here. We have ARM people here, right, exactly. Stand up, stand up, stand up, give them.